Hi everyone, let's go over question one from the Compound Data 1 workshop. So question one asks you whether these declarations and creations of arrays are valid or not, and you can see those answers there in the worked solutions. Um, but what I'm going to do with these questions is just show you uh, what that would look like in memory. So if we have a look at 1.1, um, we can see that it's used um, the first way of creating an array. It's split up the declaration and the creation in two separate lines. So this first line here says, I have a character array called A. It exists, um, but it hasn't created that array yet. It's just created a reference. So if I was to um, draw that as a memory diagram, just that first line, it would look something like this. So A is pointing to null. Um, because we have a reference for a character array, but we haven't given it an array to reference. So at this point it's null, it's nothing, um, so we can't do anything yet. Uh, and we want to be really careful with nulls because uh, we can get null pointer exceptions uh, when we run our code. And this is where a lot of bugs may come up in your assignment. So I'll show you the error you'll get here. That's question six. If I were to do exactly that, character array A, if I say it's equal to null, and then if I try and operate on that array or that reference to that array, if I say, um, what's the length? When I run that, I'll get a null pointer exception because I've tried to operate on something that's null and you can't get the length of something that's null. So you can see there's a null pointer exception down here. Um, so we want to be really careful with that, especially when we are creating our array um, in those two separate steps there. So we declare it first and then we create it. You want to be really mindful of that. So after that first line, um, A is null. Um, and then we've got that second line that says A is equal to a new character array with five spaces. So this keyword new is telling processing, I want a new array, I want a new place in memory that is big enough for five characters. So after this line is run, this will no longer point to null and it will point to an array with five places in memory big enough to fit characters. Um, and so there I've declared and I've created an array. I haven't assigned any values. Maybe I want to do that later, um, but we don't need to worry about that. So that would be the memory diagram for 1.1 um, and that one is valid. 1.2 we said was invalid because this is an integer, not an integer array. To signify that we want an array, we need to have these square brackets. Uh, so 1.2 is invalid. 1.3 is valid. If you have a look at 1.1 and 1.3, they are very similar. The only difference being, uh, well, there's two differences, one being that one is a float array, one is a character array. And the other difference is that instead of declaring and creating on two separate lines, we've done it in just one line. So if you know the size of your array, you know it's going to be five, um, then you should definitely create and declare your array just in one line. You would only use this option if you wanted to wanted to declare your array um, somewhere else and you weren't sure about how big you wanted it yet. We have to be careful because um, once we set our array size, that's the size. Um, so yeah, that would be the only time where you would do it separately would be if you want to declare it somewhere, you're not sure what the size is yet, and you can sort that out later on most of the time. Um, you'd probably want to go for how they've done it in 1.3. Um, 1.4 is also valid because these square brackets can be before or after uh, the array name. That's fine. Uh, 1.5 is invalid, and that's just because of these brackets. It's the wrong kind of brackets. We want the curly brackets like what we see in 1.6. Um, so this one here, if it was working correctly...
it would be tempting to say, oh, well, that still wouldn't work because I've got integer values here and this is a float array. But processing will convert integers to floats um, if you're assigning an int to a float variable or if you're assigning integers to a float array, it will convert that for you because there's no loss of data. Nothing really changes. Um, I mean, some things do change, but it's not too big of a change to change the number one to 1 1.0. So if I were to print out my second item at index one, it was two, but it will convert it to 2.0. So it doesn't take much to convert that there. Um, so for 1.5, if you change the brackets, that one's valid, but for now it's invalid. Um, but in saying that, 1.6 is invalid um, because we've got floats being assigned to an integer array. So processing will convert integers to floats, but it won't convert floats to integers. That's because it doesn't want any loss of data. When you convert a floating point value, like 1.2, to an int, you're rounding down and you're losing that point 0.2 of a value. Um, and so processing doesn't want to lose any of that data. So this one here will be invalid. You'll see you'll get an error there. Or <laughs> firstly, it gets an error because we have two arrays of the same name, but then it will say float does not match with int. Okay. So integers will convert to floats, but not vice versa. If we did want to convert our floats to integers, we need to put a cast at the front. So processing will only treat floating point values as integers if you tell it to by providing this cast. Um, so if that's what you wanted to do, that's what would make this valid. So that would work there. And then lastly, 1.7, that one there is valid. So we can do a quick memory diagram for that one. In that one there, you are declaring, creating, and assigning all in one line. So if you already know the values that you want in your array, um, then this is the way that you will want to create your array. It's a lot easier, doesn't need a loop to allocate your values. You can just allocate it straight away or assign it straight away. Um, so if we were to do a memory diagram here, we've got the reference A is pointing to a place in memory where we've got four values, one, two, three, four, and it's important to put our indexes there, so our labels up the top. So that's your memory diagram there. You'll see uh, another type of memory diagram in the compound data notes that looks a bit like this. That's also valid. Um, the most important thing with memory diagrams is that you have the reference, the indexes, and the values. As long as you have all of that, then that's good.